The first thing you see when you come into Clifton is the natural beauty. And the homes settled along the canyon walls, and it all kind of mixes together. I think the population lives in uniform with nature. What people should know about rattlesnakes is they're very shy. Well, I know about Clifton is mostly, when I, when I got here, it was uh, mostly blues. Jeff, I would bring sangria, and he thought I would bring a pitcher, but I brought a lot of sangria, because you don't want to be embarrassed by running out. His grandfather actually got hung for stealing horses, and my great-great-grandmother was worked in a brothel. <laughs> Walking by this property, lusting after it for years, because I kept seeing the hanging gardens of Clifton. Ah, what else does? A lady, and she's gone. It's not a multi-million dollar mine, it's a multi-billion dollar mine. I was born is no longer. The old Morenci and old Morenci is a big hole in the ground now. Sad. Sad. Because there's a lot of memories lost. <laughs> well, memories are not lost, but you know, they change. I think the the statement that you ask is uh, a lot like Cliff, uh, like uh, Morenci. I was raised up there, and it's part of mine now. And to be able to go back and not be able to walk through exactly. those the same areas, it, uh, it's sad because a part of our identity has been lost. Exactly. I was thinking about it earlier that uh, here we get to work on all different people from different exactly. uh, professions. And so for us, uh, a lot of our expertise on being electricians or carpenters, we all get them from our customers. So we get a lot of uh, uh, first-hand experience in how to be able to do things. So uh, I love my profession. I've been doing it for close to about uh, 49 years. One thing we say is Clifton, where it says tombstones too tough to die, we're tougher than tombstones. I was born in Marinci, Arizona, which is about seven miles from where we're located here today. We had the first railroad in the state of Arizona that run from down here at the river, went up Chase Creek, and it uh, was run by a burrows. They took uh, ore cars up, four miles up the canyon here. They loaded them with ore, and then they loaded the burrows on the flat car, and the burrows got a free ride back downtown. But that was the first railroad within the state of Arizona. They were going across the southern part of the state, but this railroad was actually operating before the one in southern Arizona. My name is Ian McGahey. I'm the town manager of Clifton, Arizona. I grew up in a town of 25,000 people, went to school in Washington, D.C., so coming to a place like Clifton, Arizona is definitely a change. It's so interesting to live next to the mine. The mine is the real economic engine of the area, but Clifton has its own identity and so much history and so much going for it. It's kind of the best of both worlds. Here we are in this beautiful, unique situation here in Clifton, and right up the hill is this incredible economic engine for the whole region. And it's, it's, it's like we hit the lottery. Chase Creek here in Clifton has such a history. It was kind of the red light district back in the day, 100 years ago bordellos and all kinds of interesting things going on. 
And that characteristic is carried through today. Not that we have hookers here in Clifton, but we have such a unique uh, uh, combination of people. And it's really, I think in any small community, that's the heart and soul uh, is the people. And Chase Creek Street, with its history and its, its collection of unique and interesting characters, is such a great place to live. I live on Chase Creek Street. I live in part of that history. I live in one of the oldest houses in the town. And I'm reminded every day of the unique history and past that we have here in Clifton. You know, one of the cool things about being in Clifton is there's one band, and I happen to be in it. And if you guys are around a couple nights from now, we're gonna be playing up at the bowling alley. We play once a month. And the cool thing is some of the people you're gonna meet while you're here are gonna be up there dancing to the band at the bowling alley. It's just, you know, it's one of those things that it probably only happens in a small town. You keep seeing the same people and you hang out, you know each other and have a great time. Looking over my shoulder, you'll see a very nice wall mural. And during the time of the strike, about uh, 1983, they were hoping to save some of what was going on in, in a painting. So they uh, commissioned Dave Teneo to come here and paint it. Dave Teneo is uh, the artist who painted the mural outside the Tucson Museum of Art. I was looking for a building to live in and, uh, or to, to fix up in this historic town. And I looked at this building, but it was just too big a job, so I really didn't want to do it. Was looking at another building, that didn't work, and I came back to this building. Something was just drawing me to it. It was like a work that needed to be done. I made some calls. The calls were bringing me closer and closer to owning the building, and I was eventually able to acquire the building. This building has a lot of history. Cesar Chavez, Cesar Chavez spoke here, spoke on the stage, and it was standing room only when he came to speak. So I knew that was part of what I, what I was looking to capture. It wasn't I wanted something for me, but it was I wanted to save something. Because before going into dentistry, I was a history major with a, uh, with a dental background. I heard about a town, Clifton, Arizona, and the thing that brought me to Clifton was the Buffalo Soldiers. I heard the Buffalo Soldiers had patrolled this area and they were going to have a lecture one evening. And I was talking with a real estate agent. He said, well, uh, why don't you go up and hear the lecture? But I looked on the map and it looked so remote that all I could hear were the guitars playing. And I, I told him, I don't think I'll go. He said, listen, let me come by the house, you know, drop by my house, pick me up, and we're both going. So I picked him up and we came to Clifton. Driving into Clifton, I thought it was one of these places that was closed for the season. I didn't know it was kind of, you know, a bomb downtown. But uh, there was something that kept drawing me back weekend after weekend. I'd come up here and I'd spend my weekends here. And Clifton has magically opened up a lot. There was uh, one Buffalo soldier in particular. He was Isaiah Mays. He was a Medal of Honor recipient, and he spent time in Clifton. The reason for his Medal of Honor will forever be in history based on the painting of Frederick Remington. It's holding up the paymaster by Frederick Remington. That was the reason Isaiah Mays received uh, the Medal of Honor. And because he received the Medal of Honor, I was with the 9th Cavalry Buffalo Soldiers, and I was invited as part of his family to Arlington Cemetery. So I had the Buffalo Soldier uniform, or dress uniform, invited to Arlington Cemetery. I was invited on stage as part of the Honor Guard for President Bush, Jr., and I was part of the Honor Guard for Dick Cheney, uh, and I was part of the Honor Guard for Roy Rogers and Dale Evans during their 50th wedding anniversary. And all of that really stemmed from Clifton. My name is Barbara Amon. I'm Steve Amon's wife. And uh, we're sitting in my studio in Clifton, Arizona, across from the beautiful historical uh, courthouse. I do ceramics. I have a kiln here and two wheels. I do um, sculpture. That's one of the things that I taught. And um, I've actually taught some painting classes here, so keep very busy. Like I said, I'm on town council, and I don't know if anybody mentioned this, and I hate to blow my home, toot my own horn, but I was responsible for getting the splash pop pad and the soccer field over on Park Avenue. I wrote several grants 
and I was able to attain some from, you know, Freeport Mo McGran gave us, I think, 165000 the first year and the second year and that much money. And then I wrote other grants for um, the soccer field. Anyway, that's the kind of things that I do. I stay busy. My name is Francisco Pancho Gonzalez, and I'm standing in front of the cemetery, Metcalf Cemetery, that I had erected. The cemetery is here because the mine, there was ore under the, where the cemetery was built, and the open pine mine open, started mining around it, so they, there was no room. The, there's no such thing as Metcalf itself where it stands is about 50 feet up in the air. There's no ground to tell where the town was. It has had many names. It was built as a Presbyterian church, 1912 to 1913. It's been through a few church iterations, and uh, for a long time it was a Masonic Lodge, which is very cool and kind of spiritual and sweet. And then, as I told you, the ladies did art there and now it is my bed and breakfast. Well, I watched Six Feet Under, and there was that real Swami sister in Topanga Canyon. And when I lived out in California for just a couple of years, I met some folks and ended up camping in Topanga Canyon. I thought, oh my gosh, I totally nailed the California thing. And so you mentioned Topanga Canyon, and it does kind of have that groove. It's a little tiny town, but, um, I don't know, in my crew it's amazingly multicultural and interesting and fun, but not too smarty britches. Lots of smart people, but not that overzealous intellectualism, which is nice. He showed it to me! This is a big casino. This is the lady who just gave me the hottest chili I've ever tasted in my life. Oh, you're on that, on that, okay. <laughs> It's a town that is way too tough to die, much tougher than Tombstone, but um, it, it hasn't quite decided what it wants to be following the devastating floods and strikes of the mid-80s. And uh, um, it's just now really catching on fire. And I'm excited to be part of that and love it here and want to tell you all about it. So in America today, we have a long food stream, you know, and we have a great grocery store here, but the food comes from a long way. It's picked green. It's not really fresh. It's not really flavorful. The tomatoes taste like cardboard. Even, you know, they're beautiful, but they don't taste anything like I remember as a boy. And so my goal was to provide fresh, locally produced produce, and that's what this is all about. I haven't found $200 out there yet, but across, around the corner is... Uh, Baltic and Mediterranean, I'm the Purple Properties, and you know, it's the low rent district, we understand that, but it's my monopoly, so here we go. <laughs> Me gusta darle de comer a la gente y ver que todos vienen y me gusta jugar con ellos para que se sientan en confianza, que pueden estar aquí a gusto. ¿Qué es lo que más me gusta de esta ciudad? La tranquilidad. No hay muchos carros, toda la calle es mía, me paro y no tengo que estar cuidando los carros. So no tengo que andar cuidando nada, toda la calle es mía cuando salgo y cuando entro. What you're seeing here completely 
Uh, it cost me 6000 for the land, 7000 for all the improvements, which is the home and uh, the porches and uh, what, what you see right here. You get your water, electric, sewer, for uh, $100 a month total. And my taxes to live here in, in this little home here is about $200 a year. So for, for combining that, it's $1,500 a year maximum to live here. We've got a beautiful river. The San Francisco River is right there. You can see it right, right at the bridge. And it goes back six miles into deep canyons, into just beautiful country. I love to be outdoors. And right now you're standing in uh, a vintage Clifton, which is, quote, an antique store uh, in downtown Clifton, Arizona, on the historic street of Chase Creek Street. And we bought this building um, in 2004. We drove into town. We bought it within four days. We started renovation and we moved in here in 2011 and opened the shop in 2012. In the meantime, we bought a building across the street. We put a dress shop in there and we renovated apartments. So we live here full time. We're retired, but working harder now than we were before. <laughs> she kind of liked style and dress. And I like vintage, and there's style and dress in vintage. So we got to looking at vintage. There are business people and that have renovated buildings. Um, one of the gentlemen um, started a, a farmer's market and um, he also has a greenhouse and they live on the south side. We met Kimmy Henderson who bought um, a Presbyterian church and just finished renovating it. We are close to Jeff Gaskin. He was the first person we met when we drove in this town and got out of the car. And so everyone on this street, when we drove in here, they all came out of their buildings and greeted us and welcomed in, us into their lives. My passion is reptiles, so my avocation in this area is uh, teaching people about reptiles and also, also rescuing people. Essentially, they think I'm rescuing them, really I'm rescuing the snake from certain death. People wanted to see rattlesnakes. I was always doing, uh, you know, uh, education events, and people were like, where's the rattlesnake? And I would say, well, they're dangerous. And, but they weren't really learning anything about rattlesnakes, and that's what people really want to learn about. So then I, I said, okay, I'll get a rattlesnake. <laughs> and after that, it kind of uh, ballooned to where, okay, well, I've, now I've got uh, about 12 or 13 rattlesnakes. The guys I work with, they know who I am, and the, uh, you know, pretty much everybody in the mine knows what I do. So I get called out for uh, snake calls regularly from the mine, and all the neighbors, the sheriff's office, everybody knows. And I think they're the people who know me realize I'm not crazy, so it's all good.
I was born in Old Marincy. They buried that back in the 50s. And uh, just people, I, where else would I want to be? I don't want to be in a city right now. It's too hectic, too chaotic. It's peaceful here, you know everybody. So you know who to wave to and who not to wave to. <laughs> who will bite you and who won't bite you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, hey, buddy. This is for my work friends out here in the mine. I wrote this song for them. How's that? I wake up in the morning and it's early, early, early. My woman by my side feeling squirrely, squirrely, squirrely. I can remember the worst of that one. <laughs>